going back up north tonight. It's a video. That's all right. Go to right to the right. You get some food. Are you selling tickets? Yes, ma'am. I am. The red ones are inside. Medicare. 
Maybe a new year, but of course it's the same old old Ryan budget. One that wants to make Medicare yet another <coughs> public good that gets sold off for private gain. Paul Ryan will once again have fancy names for his Medicare ideas. He'll tell us about the premium support and he'll talk about vouchers. And the truth is, he's doing the bidding of the big insurance companies. He would push retirees for buying health insurance in the costly and unfair private market. He would undo nearly 50 years of Medicare success, fundamentally changing it in a way that takes better care of CEO's wealth than seniors' health. Under the Ryan budget, Medicare would be no more than an empty promise. We cannot let that happen. My fellow Alliance members, we owe it to today's workers to keep the promise of Medicare alive for generations to come. As daunting as these challenges may seem, we cannot stop now. We do not want to be the last generation to retire. We care too much about our children, our grandchildren, to keep our voices silent during such an important time. The sequester was particularly painful, an example of what happens when politicians like Paul Ryan choose obstructionism and pettiness over the day-to-day -day needs of the American people. Because of the sequester, there will be four million fewer meals delivered through Meals on Wheels. Nearly two million transportation rides for seniors will be canceled, and 300,000 senior households will lose federal help with their heating bills. And Social Security offices, wait times both in person and over the phone will increase as staffing levels will be cut. And the worst part of these reckless sequester cuts, they did not have to happen. Had more people in Congress had a sense of fairness and compassion, this would never have happened. In all of these fights we've been through together, too many people in Washington and in the media continue to target Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid for a cold, terribly unfair cut. They ask those with the least to sacrifice the most. They give outrageous tax breaks to the wealthy and to big corporations. They put two unfunded wars onto the nation's credit card, and they ask the people who did not cause these problems to pay the price to clean it up. Until we change this, we will continue to face these threats to Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid. Each new crisis, each new high-stakes drama in Washington is yet another battle in our long fight for social and economic justice. There will always be a loud, vocal minority of people who will try to stand in the way of progress. Now, when Franklin Roosevelt was fighting for Social Security in the 1930s, some people said it would ruin the nation. In 1961, nine years before Paul Ryan was born and 35 years before Fox News went on the air, Ronald Reagan opposed creating Medicare. He called it socialized medicine. He said it would bankrupt our country. I mention this as a reminder that these battles did not begin yesterday, and they won't be over by tomorrow. We have no choice but to keep up the fight. As all of you know better than anyone, governors like Scott Walker and Republican legislatures across the country are on the attack against the men and women who dedicate their lives to public service. If all you ever knew came from watching Fox News or listening to talk radio, you'd have no idea what public workers do every day. But we know that public workers don't make shareholders wealthier. They make our communities stronger. When I look around this room, I see people who dedicated their lives to helping others. Public service is one of the highest callings anyone could aspire to. And these are the people in our country who care for the sick. They keep our neighborhoods safe. They form the backbone of daily life in our cities and our towns. But right-wing politicians see things differently. To them, public service and collective bargaining are just things to take cheap shots at. It's not fair, and we cannot let them get away with it. It is wrong when Scott Walker wants to cut the Wisconsin retirement system, one of the best in the country. It is wrong when he wants to cut the homestead tax credit that helps lower income seniors. And it's wrong when he turns down Medicaid money from Washington denying badly needed help to Wisconsin seniors and children. To the reckless ideology of the Scott Walkers everywhere, we're not saying just no, we say hell no. <laughs> Collective bargaining. Ask any union retired.
retiree, I'm going to tell you how a union voice allowed them to sit down with the management to find ways to do their jobs better. Because of our unions, we could stand up to pressure to cut all the wrong corners. You ask any union retiree and you'll tell you, they'll tell you how a union contract helped them retire with the economic security and peace of mind. We must tell younger folks how our generation and those who came before us used our right to work and in the community to create good jobs and good wages. We helped build the strong neighborhoods where you could raise a family. But while some politicians mock collective bargaining to score a cheap political point, we all know the truth. Collective bargaining is how we built the middle class. We've got our hands full this year. So what should we do? Well, to me, we need to clear up all the misinformation that is being aimed at seniors. Right-wing politicians, the media, the big corporations, they are all trying to scare us. And whether it's the phony warnings about Medicare, Social Security going bankrupt, or the outright lies about public workers and their benefits, it just never ends. So how can we do better? How can we educate and mobilize more work voters in support of candidates that are on our side? And how do we can battle this misinformation being aimed at seniors? That's where all of us come in. We, we must do everything we can to clear up the lies of people here every time they turn on the TV, the radio, or their computer. We must push our boundaries and push our comfort zones and reach out to new people and places. I believe that doing more with online communications, with tools such as email, Facebook, and YouTube, well, that will help us reach new people. The Alliance now has a special email list for those who are most active most dedicated to the fights we will have this year. We have about 10,000 people on this list, and to make sure you are on it, please see one of us here today. I believe we need to do a major outreach to the younger generation. Some of our state alliance chapters have begun going to college campuses to help educate students about what's going on with seniors. Younger I'm just deeply indebted to them. Uh, for all the incredible work that they did and in making this a, a model organization for the country. But also, again, thanks to each and every one of you in this room today. Thanks.